Hey, so remember the dancing baby? This one? This GIF made the rounds online in the late 90s and it's considered to be one of the first viral videos. Now, if someone were to ask you where this GIF is from, would you be able to answer? Well, if not, that's not a problem, because I can tell you it's a simple Google search away. Here's the Wikipedia article where we can learn that... Michael Girard started the company Unreal Pictures Incorporated together with his wife Susan Amkraut in 1993. Together they worked on several sample animations to be released with a plugin for 3DS Max called Character Studio. One of the team members they hired, Robert Lurier, provided the dance moves by expanding on an already existing file called ChaCha.bit, adding the shaking shoulders and air guitar moves. The 3D model for the baby was created by Tony Morrill and sold through Viewpoint Data Labs. Finally, another Unreal Pictures team member, John Chadwick, took Tony's model, applied Robert's dance to it, and there we go. SK underscore baby dot max was born. Okay, let's do another one. How about this one, the dude dude skeleton guy? Kinda looks like something from around that same time, shouldn't be that hard to find, and... Yeah, look at that. Yet again, the answer is a simple Google search away. Except what if I told you that every single one of these search results are blatantly incorrect? What if I told you that I've spent the last several weeks doing nothing else than trying to track down the origin of this trumpet-playing skeleton? And what if I told you that to my knowledge no one has attempted this before, and if someone has, no one has succeeded, but I did. So let me tell you what I found. So about a month ago I was in the final stretch of editing my last video and at one point I wanted to add a quintessential spooky GIF to spice up some joke I was making. I opened the GIF search bar and without hesitating I wrote the words Trumpet Skull. I dropped the GIF into the timeline but then I stopped for a second because I had a thought. Is it really called Trumpet Skull? This thought was quickly followed by another Where's that GIF from anyway? So, as implied in the intro, I did what any normal person would do, turned to Google. And again, just as expected, here is a listing for Skull Trumpet slash Doot Doot on KnowYourMeme.com. Scrolling down to origin, we can read the following. According to various accounts, the Skull Trumpet Sprite was first introduced through 3D Movie Maker, a computer graphic software program developed and released by Microsoft's Microsoft Kids subsidiary in 1995. There we go. That was that. My query solved, I went back to work. Except... something irked me. See... I didn't grow up with Microsoft 3D Movie Maker, but about a year ago or so, I was planning to do a stream where I'd be playing around in the software, and in preparation for that stream, being the spooky boy that I am, I specifically played around with the skeleton, and this trumpet skull looks nothing like I remember the skeleton looking in 3D Movie Maker. But again, I did what any normal person would do, I shrugged it off as a faulty memory and got back to work, except... I didn't. Instead, I downloaded 3D Movie Maker, opened it up, placed down the skeleton, and just as I remembered, it looked nothing like Trumpet Skull. Something wasn't adding up. Back to Google. I searched Skeleton Trumpet Windows 3D Movie Maker, and among the pages upon pages of websites parroting this same seemingly incorrect statement, I found this video. Various sources online claim that the Doot Skeleton was created using Microsoft 3D Movie Maker. This is the skeleton character provided in 3D Movie Maker. Now ask yourself, does this skeleton look like this skeleton? The answer is clearly no. They, they look nothing alike. Is there no consideration for facts? 
for the truth in today's modern web environment? It starts with the dude's skeleton, but where does it end? To what extremes will this disregard- now obviously this guy knows what he's talking about, but neither him nor anyone in the comments brought any clarity to the next natural question. If it's not from 3D Movie Maker, then where is it from? And this is where my hunt really began. But before we continue here, I just want to get this out early on. For this video, I have gone places and I have found things that, again, as far as I know, no one else has before. This presents a pretty exciting scenario for you, actually, because, you see, I'm a small channel and as of recording this, I'm at almost exactly 5,000 subscribers. This means that if you're watching this video and the view countdown there is still pretty low, you're among the first people in the world to learn about this. This means that you can say, yeah, I actually learned about this way before everyone else. This means that you can go to correct the Know Your Meme article. This means that you can email Redbubble and ask how much money goes to the actual artist behind this image from the sales of all of their merch that has it right on it. You can send angry DMs to everyone claiming that it comes from 3D Movie Maker. But you can only do that if you finish this video. Am I just trying to get you to watch the whole thing? Maybe. But what I'm saying is still true. So sit back, relax, keep calm, and I'll get into how I went about figuring this whole thing out and where it led me, starting with some context for the meme. On February the 15th, 2011, a YouTube channel under the name PiePuppy89 uploaded a one second video titled only Skull Trumpet. Here is that YouTube video in full. As it would soon turn out, this YouTube account is owned by Tumblr user, illustrator and Twitter personality Wolfpuppy. And due to them already having an established audience, this video quickly garnered some views. And as with anything of this nature, it's a pointless endeavor to try and understand exactly how or why virality happens, but happen, it did. Soon the video had racked up thousands of views. This trumpet playing skull, now permanently affixed with the phrase doot doot and often followed by comments reading thank you Mr. Skeletal, had risen to meme status. Over the coming years and up to this very day, it can be seen in a variety of contexts, especially around Halloween time and it has had countless fan edits, parodies and offshoot memes and at some point along the line, someone somewhere must have claimed that Skull Trumpet originated from 3D Movie Maker and someone else decided, without verifying any of it, to just run with that statement, cementing it into the Skull Trumpet lore. But as already established, I have strong reasons to believe that that is not the case. And with that history out of the way, let's get back to the hunt. First and foremost, just to be 100% sure that I could exclude 3D Movie Maker completely, I went through all of the animations, all of the maps, and I dug through all of the files to see if I could find a single trace of a trumpet playing skull, or even a skull, or even just a trumpet. But other than our bony friend here, I came up empty-handed. So let's take our first real plunge into the rabbit hole and start studying the GIF in a bit more detail to see what we can gather. The trumpet skull animation is either 13 or 20 frames long, depending on what version you're looking at. For many of the ones you'll find online, the first two frames are repeated three times right at the start. I believe this to be an error that happened somewhere along the line. Next, I want to draw your attention to the top of the skull's head. Note how the shape of the light reflections change as the skull moves. This implies that whatever software was used to create this GIF has some sort of rudimentary light engine, which, by the way, 3D Movie Maker does not. Next, I want you to pay close attention to the movement, i.e. how the head turns. This looks, to me, not like a keyframed animation, but rather it looks like someone using their mouse to rotate an object a little bit at a time, taking a screenshot, rotating it a little bit more, taking another screenshot, etc. And finally, let's focus on the bell of the trumpet as it toots. See that? Look at the hand. See how one finger and parts of the hand also distorts as the bell grows. 
This tells me that while the rotation of the skull and the trumpet is in 3D, the trumpet bell growing is not. Rather, it's simple photo manipulation on top of the 3D animation. Something along the same lines as the liquify tool in Photoshop affecting this area. Here's a quick recreation by me, just so we're all on the same page. Rotate the model, screenshot, rotate some more, screenshot, repeat this process until satisfied. Now take one frame, bloat this area, which accidentally also includes some of the hand, compile into GIF, and here they are side by side. Now obviously I can't verify this, but I'm pretty confident in my assessment here, so with this knowledge, let's try and figure out who did all of this in the first place. For the obvious first step, I use TinyEye to perform a reverse image search. If you don't know what that is, it's essentially like a Google search to find an image except reversed. You load an image into it and it finds where that image has appeared online. I get these results that date as far back as 2011. This makes sense as that is when the meme first blew up, but I refuse to believe that there are no traces of this thing to be found from before that time. I go back to the Know Your Meme article, scroll down to the sources and go through them one by one. As expected and already established, several claims here completely lack sources. However, at one point an article written by Gawker is mentioned. This would have probably been a good place to start, as it hopefully would have been written by an actual journalist who verifies their sources, but as it turns out, this article has since been deleted. I file that into the back of my mind for now and continue digging. Another link takes me to a Facebook fan page, simply called Skull Trumpet, started in March of 2011, just one month after Pie Puppy's video. At first glance, this page doesn't seem to have much of interest in it, but then I notice that due to Facebook not allowing GIFs to play, the GIF has here instead been converted into a single frame JPEG. Furthermore, judging by the size of the image and the reasonably clean pixels, this looks like it could be from a cleaner version of the GIF than the one that I've been working with. To clarify, cleaner as in one that hasn't been uploaded, downloaded, converted, upscaled, compressed, uploaded and downloaded again before falling into my lap. Hopefully. So I take this JPEG and I go back to TinyEye, I hit upload and... Bingo. Results now stretch way further back and I can almost taste the sweet, sweet release of closure. Sorting the results by age, the oldest instance that I can find is from 2008 on a URL called pepperonery.com, a now defunct website with a strange and confusing history that I can't make much sense of. The most interesting aspect here is the file name, which tells me that this image likely did go by the name Trumpet Skull around this time, while also possibly pointing to an original resolution and color space. Below Pepperonity we have poscole.pl. This website is also long gone by now, but with the help of the Wayback Machine I could access a very barebones version of the page where the Trumpet Skull supposedly appeared. Now all the image links are dead and I don't know Polish, but by using the file name provided by TinyEye, I managed to figure out that the GIF in question is supposedly this box right here. A community member from my Discord server, linked in the description by the way, helps me translate the page and we find that it belonged to a 12 year old boy going by the name Drag, 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 Drag. who in 2008 had this to say about himself. About me, I like dragons, cars, like Poznan. Corpses, etc. Now mostly dragons and chess. And while right, right, right. undoubtedly sounds like a really cool guy, I get the feeling that he didn't create this GIF and stick it in the middle of a bunch of other GIFs without crediting himself. So if this Polish kid had access to the GIF in 2008, surely it can't have been that obscure before this point. But just how popular was it? I have no way of knowing. Google Trends show a confusing spike in popularity around 2004, but I suspect that their data is incorrect, but I know somewhere where we might get some answers. Remember that Gawker article? I go back to Know Your Meme, grab the article URL, make my way into the Wayback Machine, and there we go. Microsoft 3D Movie Maker, a kid's computer graphics software that debuted in 1994. 
1995, the consensus among Skull Trumpet Cognoscenti is that their hero was initially lifted from a demo within the game. Connor Dennis, another Ledoot Generation moderator, that's that. That's the subreddit. Ew. <clears throat> Sorry. Uh, Connor Dennis, another the Dude Generation moderator, told me Skull Trumpet was definitely taken from that two-second 3D MM video. The author then goes on to explain how they download 3D Movie Maker, dig through the files, and much like myself, couldn't find any trace of a trumpet playing skull. The article continues. The only other potential line to Skull Trumpet's origin I could find was through Wolf Puppy, a pseudonymous Twitter personality and webcomics artist. I emailed Wolf Puppy looking for answers and promptly received an appropriately mysterious response. The information you are looking for is best left unknown. That's pretty huge, right? Did Wolf Puppy actually create this GIF themselves? I mean, I know it can't have been around the time that they posted the video, because, you know, it was around way before that. But what's to say they hadn't made this animation years and years before and just didn't post it until 2011? Well, there's only one way to find out. I join Wolf Puppy's Patreon, and I send them a message. Okay, still with me? Can you feel it? The vibrations in the air? The smell of victory or whatever? I know it's been a lot to take in, but you're, you're, you're doing great, okay? So, there are a couple of more pretty major twists, but before we get to those... Sorry for the interruption here, but today's video is sponsored by my Patreon page. It's almost Christmas, as you can see, and also Christmas is my birthday, so maybe you should consider giving me a little Christmas gift or a little birthday present. Also, thank you to these people for helping me edit some parts of this video. Uh, if you want motion graphics and stuff, there should be links down in the description. Here's Santa. That's insane. Let's get on with the video. Despite their previously cryptic response to the author of the Gawker article, it doesn't take Wolf Puppy long to get back to me. As the person who made the Skull Trumpet video on my PiePuppy89 YouTube account, I can say I have seen zero evidence that it came from 3D Movie Maker. I can say I originally found the animated GIF for the Skull Trumpet video from a now defunct site called Heather's Animations. The site had a big collection of early internet GIFs, including the Skull Trumpet one and a GIF of a 3D rotating piece of bread, which I also turned into a YouTube video. Heather's Animations. Quick Google search. Defunct. Wayback Machine. And there he is. Unfortunately, the file name is simply Skull125, which doesn't do much for us right now, and despite how this website may look, this page is from 2011, so while this initially might look and feel like a more significant find, I quickly realized that this isn't much different from the ones that I've already found through TinyEye. It's at this point that I start to get desperate. The answer feels so close, yet so far away. I delete this new download and go to my archive of saved Skull Trumpet GIFs. Mirrored versions, transparent versions, different resolutions, different frame rates, with and without the repeating start frames. Okay, let's do this. I throw each and one of these files into a metadata inspector, just in case I've missed something. Nothing. 
Okay, next, let's take each and one of them and split their animations up into separate frames and then run each and every one of those frames through reverse image search one by one. The logic behind this being that in the same way that the Facebook page turned the animation into a single frame JPEG which suddenly yielded older results, perhaps some other archaic website did the same thing but with another frame. But two hours of painstaking work later, and still nothing. And it's at this point that I can feel the hope drain out from my body. My spirit broken and tired, my motivation at an all-time low. I've hit a wall. Am I not supposed to get to the bottom of this? Like, is this mystery simply meant to go unsolved? I feel like I've done everything I can and I've gone above and beyond. Is, is this really it? As a last resort, I sink deeper than I previously thought I ever could. In the words of Nietzsche, Beware that when fighting monsters, you yourself do not become a monster. For when you gaze long into the abyss, the abyss gazes also into you. And so it did, when I, tail between my legs, head hanging low, created a thread on Reddit. Actually, no. Why obfuscate the truth? I made several threads, okay? I made one on Internet Bureau of Investigation, another one on Internet Mysteries, one on Wang's subreddit, and one on... Ledoot Generation, okay? Now, these threads continued the trend of not yielding much results. Someone came in and confidently told me that, oh, that gif, yeah, 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 it's from RuneScape, no doubt about it, 100% sure, I've seen it with my own eyes, and I didn't even get excited. Instead, I just asked for sources on their claims, and soon they had backtracked. They were mistaken, sorry. Of course they were. Someone else pointed out that a YouTube comment somewhere says that they think it was made with a Silicon Graphics Indie, a lead that I had already investigated which led nowhere, because that's kinda like saying, I think this photo is edited in Photoshop. Someone else mentioned having seen several other similar GIFs in the same style. They were 100% sure, they specifically remember seeing them themselves. But as I followed up on this lead, googling flute skeleton, guitar skeleton, drum skeleton and tuba skeleton, I came up empty-handed, nothing that looks like our friend here. So this was the end of the road, I thought, but then came Amelia Likes Birds. Alright, so I did some digging myself. I don't want to toot my own horn, ha, huh. but I think I found the source, but I'm not entirely sure. The Heather's animation site lists the skeletal GIF as early as 2004. Image metadata of the 2004 image says that there is... I stop reading. No. No, no, it doesn't. No, no. <laughs> Heather's animation, that, that was in 2011. I, I have it here somewhere. No, because that's way later. Let, let me just... Wait. Wait. No. She's right. There he is. In 2004, but no, he, he, can't, he can't be. How, how, did, how did I miss this? I checked the metadata of every single image that I downloaded. I even checked the metadata of every individual frame. I delete this. No, 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 no. No. It's not true. That's impossible. Such a thing. No, it's not true. No! No! Okay, so 
somehow, despite doing everything in my power to be as thorough as possible, despite going through the metadata of every single image that I stumbled upon, despite going through every single Wayback Machine capture of every single website that I found during my research, or at least so I thought, I, for some reason that I can't explain, did not look further back into the history of Heather's animation or at the metadata of the GIF that I downloaded from that website, and that was the one place where I should have looked. Now, full disclosure, I'm not trying to take anything away from Amelia Likes Birds here by saying, you know, oh, I would have found it with or without her help or anything along those lines. She definitely came in clutch with this. At this point, I had spent way, way too many hours going over every detail to the point where I probably couldn't see the woods for all the trees. And you better believe me when I say that I've been beating myself up over this because I was so close. I, I, did, I feel like I did pretty much everything right. I did all of the parts that she did, but I just didn't do them in the right place. It was like, just as I was about to pass the finish line, I stumbled. My bruised ego aside, we did it. We found the actual origin of Doot Doot, of Mr. Skeletal, of Skull Trumpet, or should I say Jazz Skull. I'm a wife, a training consultant for restaurant managers, and a woman who is obsessed by my webpage and animations. I entered the world of the web about a year ago and started a family webpage using other people's animated graphics about three months later. It wasn't long until I started discovering pages that gave instructions on creating your own animated GIFs. I downloaded GIF construction set and I was hooked. I now work on my page or my graphics virtually every spare moment I have. In fact, some moments that aren't so spare, according to my husband. Kathy Jarbo, profile presentation, gifartist.com, November 27, 1999. Again, with the help of the Wayback Machine, I find my way to Kathy's old website, cjarbo.com. And sure enough, there he is. Through this one website, I am led through a sometimes confusing and sometimes outright broken, but an always creatively radiating maze of pages upon pages of Kathy's vast portfolio of GIFs and wallpapers. A few moments later I find myself on one of her even older websites, home1.gte.net slash cajarbo, which just like its sequel does not disappoint when it comes to the presentation of Kathy's creative drive and passion. The art styles and motifs are not limited to skeletons or even Halloween themed creations, even if she does have a whole page dedicated to those. There are beach scenes, Christmas scenes, general mystical themes, jazz themes. And I can't help but feel a sort of awe. Granted, I don't know anything about Kathy, but this is the late 90s and judging by her bio and this witch image featuring the faces of some of her friends, I'd say that Kathy wasn't like in her teens when she created all of these images and furthermore, she wasn't a professional illustrator. I might be overanalyzing here, but it feels to me that like somewhere around the early 90s, Kathy must have been one of those types of people who very quickly took hold of this new internet thing. And Kathy, she made it hers. This is Kathy's world, with Kathy's rules, Kathy's fascinations, fixations, experiments, and art. And listen, please don't misinterpret what I'm about to say. I understand that I don't know this person or almost anything about her, but I love Kathy. Or rather, I, I love the idea of Kathy. I love what Kathy represents. 
Because as I'm reading through page after page, downloading image after image, Kathy evolves from being just this name connected to all of these GIFs into something bigger. Kathy becomes for me creative, freedom. Kathy becomes the fire that burns inside of so many creatives to just do. Not for the money, not for the fame or recognition, but simply for the love of doing it. And to imagine that this is where I ended up, that I got to feel these feelings, that I got to share these words with you at home watching this video, to think that all of this is thanks to Skull Trumpet. Or, uh, yeah, right, no, let's clear this name situation up real quick. So, Kathy has given this gift several different names or titles. The original file was called Jazz Skull, but on this page she refers to it as Jazzy Skull. And in this section, where she also mentions that it once won a prize, she refers to it as the Mystic Trumpeting Skull. Which, to be honest, if it were up to me, uh, would be the official name. But yes, as I was saying, if it hadn't been for the mystic trumpeting skull, I never would have discovered Kathy or her art, and I never would have gotten to share it with all of you, and for that I'm very thankful. Thank you, Mr. Jaskull. And this is where I was gonna leave the video off originally. Kathy existing as a sort of representation of the passionate artist, the struggling creative, but then I reread this last part of her profile presentation on gifartist.com. The requests that I get to download my graphics are such an ego booster. I guess that's what keeps me at it. To think someone actually wants to use my art. And I was reminded that, despite whatever romanticized idea I might wax on poetically about, Kathy, the real Kathy, isn't a concept. She isn't a representation of anything, and even though I of course mean no harm, I am also, in a way, dehumanizing someone that likely right now, in this very moment, exists somewhere in the world. Someone that felt, and maybe feels, and someone that, at least back then, created. And the most harrowing thought in all of this is, of course, what if she doesn't know? What if Kathy doesn't know that this gift that she created sometime in like 1999 is, to this day, being shared to millions of people? Because from what I've been able to find, Kathy doesn't really have any social media accounts tied to her name. She might as well be fully unaware that her legacy lives on, online. She might be unaware that countless people all over the internet in a much bigger capacity than it would have been in the early 2000s are sharing her artwork. Daily. That it's on mugs, shirts, stickers, posters, on countless people's social media feeds and profiles, in video games, that there's an honest-to-god U2's vinyl figure of it, and... Let me ask you this. Based on what you've seen of her and her creations so far, if she doesn't know, don't you think she would want to? Wouldn't you even go as far as to say that she deserves to? And with that, I guess we're not quite done. Back to my desk, let's keep digging. So what I'm about to do here might feel a bit stalkery, I guess? And perhaps it is. I don't know. I'm not a real journalist by any stretch of the imagination, so I can't say for sure, but at least as I was doing this research, that's how I justified it to myself. It's research. And just so we're all on the same page here, my goal is not to, like, bother some nice elderly couple and shove weird online meme culture in their faces asking if they're thankful to Mr. Skeletal or whatever like that. I just want to get a hold of Kathy and make sure that... that she knows. And maybe she does already. Maybe she doesn't care. And if I'm lucky, maybe I can ask her a question or two. But maybe also perhaps she doesn't know, and perhaps she does care. So... I just want to make sure.
I begin by digging through a handful of Instagram and Facebook accounts belonging to people sharing Kathy's surname. There are quite a few, but no matter how I look, I can't find any accounts that belong to Kathy herself, nor can I find any mentions of Kathy on any of the other accounts. However, there are quite a few Kathy Jarbos out there, so it's hard to know exactly which one it is that I'm looking for. I could of course reach out to each one of them individually, but I'd consider that as a last resort. So instead I look back at the metadata. Created or modified by Kathy Jarbo. Rod Jarbo. I instead start looking for Rod, and to my surprise it doesn't take me long to find him. On his profile I even find a post made by Kathy. I figure that it's very unlikely that there's another Kathy and Rod couple that have this exact surname, so this has to be the right person. The profile doesn't look active though, and it hasn't posted anything in years, but I send a message anyway. A few days pass, with no reply. So I go through his friend list and decide to send everyone on it that shares their surname the same message, explaining who I am and who I'm trying to get into contact with. At the same time, I also reach out to my friend Hannah, who lives in the US, who helps me track down a phone number. I try calling it a couple of times, but I can't get a hold of anyone. Perhaps they're not picking up because the caller ID number looks weird, seeing how I'm calling from Sweden via Skype, so I leave a voicemail and also ask Hannah if she could try giving them a call. She does, but still, no one picks up. So I ramp it up. If we have their phone number, we surely must have their address too, right? And we do, and Hannah just so happens to be about an hour away from where we believe they live. She offers to go there if I can't get a hold of anyone for another couple of days. At this point, I've not managed to get a response from a single person, and I just can't let this go. And I'll be the first to admit that at this point I was perhaps getting a little bit obsessive. In my head I was building this up, because surely if they're this hard to get a hold of, they simply aren't very online people, meaning that the likelihood of Kathy being aware of her online legacy is pretty small. I started having these grandiose visions. I imagined that Hannah would go there, she'd explain that I'd been trying to reach them, and then help me schedule a video call with Kathy. Due to time zone differences, I'd stay up late, preparing before hopping on the call. Thank you so much for speaking to me, I'd say. I know that this is gonna sound strange, but would you happen to remember a gift that you made back in the late 90s of a trumpet-playing skull? I'd tell Kathy all about the memes, the tattoos, figurines, video game references, of my obsession and the false origins. I'd share my screen, I'd show her link after link, image after image, video after video, and Kathy would gasp, hand over her mouth. I had no idea, she would say. I even started planning for Hannah to bring a printout version of Jaskull for Kathy to sign that I could proudly hang in my apartment and all I needed to make this a reality was to somehow get a hold of Kathy. Several more days pass and still not a single person I DM'd has replied or even read my message. The day we had agreed that Hannah would be driving out there is slowly approaching. But then I noticed that on one of the profiles that I've messaged, Rose Jarbo, one of Kathy's more actively online relatives, she has a business page that she posts on almost daily. And just as I'm visiting this page, a new post appears. Rose is online. Right now. This is my chance. I send a message to this business page, apologizing for reaching out this way, but that I haven't managed to get a hold of anyone, so I'm running out of ideas. I hesitate for a second, but then I hit send. Contact has been established. 30 minutes passes, no response. I panic. I send another message, assuring that I'm not some internet weirdo hacker bot or anything. And then, three hours later... Hello, my name's Ben. You contacted my wife, Rose, about my aunt, Kathy. You have the right person, but... Unfortunately, Kathy died in 2020. I would love to see which of her illustrations touched you. Best wishes, Ben Jarbo.
After this, I, of course, apologized if I brought up any painful memories. I share with Ben the image in question and I tell him the full story. They read my message, but I receive no further reply. To be honest, I chalk this up to the fact that not all people are as chronically online as me and also that I reached out just around Thanksgiving. Or perhaps they simply didn't want to speak to me any further, that's impossible for me to know. Obviously, I would have wished for this video to end in some other way, but just saying that feels quite cynical and disrespectful, because, like, in all honesty, fuck my video. Kathy was a real human, not some character in a video essay. And this isn't a true crime channel, I don't want to sensationalize her passing or spin some narrative about how it affects me, you, this gif, or least of all, this video. Here at the very end of the video, I was hoping to include an interview with someone who knew Kathy, or to perhaps read a few sentences of how the people in her life remember her, but I sent a follow-up message letting Ben and Rose know that I'm finishing this project up, asking if they or anyone else in the family might want to share something, and at the time of recording this, they have not replied. If they do, and if I get their permission to share anything, there will be a pinned comment below this video. Earlier, as I was reaching out to Wolf Puppy, in their reply they said this. I think, like me when I made the original video, everyone else just puts the lowest amount of thought and effort into Skull Trumpet. And all that I can hope is that from now on, at least a few people will think of Kathy whenever they see Jaskal. I can only speak for myself, but I know that I will. But I won't just be thinking about how Kathy is no longer with us, or how she maybe never knew how many people were sharing her artwork online. Personally, I'll choose to let Kathy's jazz skull be a reminder that no matter how seemingly insignificant, no matter how or why, whatever I or anyone else creates, it should be coming from a place of genuine passion. Because when it does, it has the chance to, against all odds, be remembered.